moved into a new era, into a new year and even a new era. The 44th president has taken office and his desire to make America hugely different has people waiting and watching. Somebody's going to get that in a minute. Uh, his promise to be better to black folk than even Jesus Christ will probably fail and not take hold. I'm sure that it is a promise that he cannot keep. His push toward isolation will likely hurt the American economy. Uh, his wanting to repeal and replace will hinder the growth of our nation. Uh, we, we live in strange times. People seem to be cutting off their nose to spite their face. Unemployment is at a 10-year low, and the economy is growing. More people are insured than ever before, and the nation decides to have drastic change and even unstable change. The desire to make America work for white people again has been with us since the very beginning of this nation. Uh, but, but the reality is, the reality is, this nation has always worked for those, particularly white males. In, in the midst of this church's 117 year journey, we have struggled to ensure that people that look like us and even those that don't look like us always have enough to move forward and to push forward. At times, it, it, it has been difficult, but we have made it because of God's favor and because of God's grace. For, for the past few weeks, we, we've been talking about uh, reboot a new year and a new start. We've been in a series about doing something different in the new year. We, we have used this metaphor of rebooting a computer to talk about starting anew this year. As we've traveled through this metaphor, we've dealt with the keys of the three finger salute separately. We, we've dealt with the notion of alt, delete, and control. We've unpacked alt, delete, and control and explored the keyboard as a metaphor for life and the limited options that it can sometimes seem to have. But we've realized that there are more options than we think there are. When, when life becomes a little difficult and, and the options seems few and in between, hitting the alt key expands our possibility. When, when we find ourselves headed down the wrong path, God is always deleting. God is always deleting and rewriting our future. Allowing God to take control can change your whole world around. We, we, we now understand what these keys do individually, but, but can we discuss what they do collectively? Can we discuss what they do collectively? See, control alt delete is used to interrupt a function on a computer, normally causing the computer to do what is called a soft reboot or a soft restart. It call or it calls up the task manager and where you can end a program or do various different things. The, the function was created by this guy named David Bradley at IBM, and, and the original command was control alt escape, but the escape button was too close to the control and the alt button, so he figured people would hit it accidentally, and so he changed it to control alt delete. Uh, the, the, the keys, uh, and, and so this control alt delete, it, 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 it was, initially conceived as something only programmers would use, but it found its way into what we use on the daily basis. Each key, each of these keys have their own function, but when pushed in concert, they reboot the computer. They start the computer over. The, the keys are essentially stronger together. Wait. The keys are essentially stronger together. They're, they're, they're able to start the computer over. 
See, when, when we, 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 we know Paul, we, we know Paul and we know a little bit about 1 Corinthians, but, but, but let's talk about this community called Corinth. This uh, providence of Greece had, had major influence in the Greco-Roman world. And, 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 and because of its location, it was a great trading route. It was on the Mediterranean Sea, and, and so it, made, it was a bridge uh, it was a bridge or a trade port for the rest of Europe. Even when Corinth fell, it rebounded well because of its position on the sea. Corinth was a society of the haves and the have-nots. There was no middle ground in the community of Corinth, a society that had a higher population of enslaved people than it did of free people. Now, that, that sounds similar to the South in which this nation uh, started. Uh, pa Paul established this church in Corinth around 51 AD. And, and he writes this letter some four or five years later to deal with issues of individualism and self-promotion. Yeah. Right. He, he's speaking to people who are only thinking about themselves and concerned about what they are doing. The church at Corinth was dealing with some ordinary yet major issues. Uh, they, they were ordinary because the church is a reflection of the people it serves. Well, uh, let me say that again. They, they're ordinary because the church is a reflection of the people that it serves. So, so the church was dealing with issues every organization has to deal with. Yeah. And, and so the church is an organization that is in existence to counter the world system so that these so that these be, don't become major issues in God's system. Uh, let, let me just say that again. See, the church is an organization that counters world systems so that the issues of the world don't become a major issue in God's system. And, and, and so the world system seeks to separate while God's system calls us together. And we, we, the world system seeks negative confrontation while God demands compassion and comfort and, 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 and togetherness. Oh, yeah. Like many churches today, the church at Corinth was seeking to change a community that didn't know it needed to be changed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yet, yet it sounds like the community was trying to change the church. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, let, let, oh, see, yeah. see, too often the community attempts to change the church when it really should be the other way around. The church at Corinth was dealing with issues of we versus me. What, what, what Ronald Richardson in his book called Creating a Healthier, Healthier Church calls the life or the, of togetherness and individuality. Uh, either can be good or bad. Uh, we, we, we need both. We, we need we and we need me. We, we, we need to have both of those in our lives. We, we need to be concerned about the group, but we also need to be concerned about ourselves. The problem is, the problem is that oftentimes we go to either extreme. We either become too we or too me. Now somebody is thinking, what, 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 what can make too we bad? Well, well, what can make too we bad? It, 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 see, depending on the anxiety and the maturity of the person or the group depends on how you live in those two spaces, the we and the me. So, so if there is high anxiety and, and low maturity, uh, you elect a president. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Hey, if there's high anxiety and low maturity, you isolate to yourself and become focused on me. If there's high anxiety and low maturity, then you're just so focused, you want to shut up, shut out all of the rest of the world and say, those folk can't come here. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. So, 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 if there's high anxiety in the church, and there's low spiritual maturity in the church. Folk can't just come into the church because then you start having issue with those folk. Yeah. 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 Hush skirt too short. Yeah. 
Wait, he don't think like we, yep. I, I, I know, I know that don't happen here at Mount Welcome. <laughs> But, but, but when there's high anxiety, when, when, when the stress levels are high and, 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 and there's this a sense of low maturity, then the we or the me can be, can, it, 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 it can go to another extreme. Uh, another, uh, see, in, in, in the 1930s, in the 1930s, right, right? We, we know what happened in the 1930s, the, the advent of the World War, the Great Depression. And so, so there was high anxiety in, in Germany, right? right? And, and, and there was low maturity in Germany. So, so there was a rise to what? The Nazi party. Wait, wait, wait. And so, so wait, wait. And, 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 and so when, when there is high anxiety and low maturity, something happens. And, and, and so uh, this, this, this notion of living on the polar ends of each of these can cause difficulty in the church. The, the church of today, like the church at Corinth, is dealing with the me versus me factor. Uh, what, what, what is this factor? And, and, and so this, 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 this factor is exacerbated by the media. It's, it's exacerbated by the media and pop culture and even sometimes in churches. Sometimes, you know, sometimes churches, you know, some churches, they, they, they have cliques in the church. Amen. Amen. You know, so, so sometimes, you, you know, you, you have to be a part of a certain group. Wait, 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 wait. So, sometimes, you, you, you know, sometimes, sometimes to get on a ministry, wait, wait, you have to, wait. See, they, they, they teach us, the, the media and, and pop culture and even sometimes the church, it, it teaches us, it, it teaches us a segregation instead of multiculturalism. It, it teaches us individualism instead of appreciation for individuality. And, and, and so, wait, 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 individualism and respect for individuality, wait, wait, you, you need to break that down for me. So, so. Individualism is when you're only concerned about yourself and, and how it benefits you. But, but uh, respect for individuality, you respect your individual person and you respect the individuality of all of those around you. Uh, the, the unhumble beginnings of this nation centered on the we versus me. All of this led, leads, to, leads to this thing, and it leads to us, one, it leads to us disregarding others. We, we, we have a tendency to, deal, see, the me versus we, when we're at those polar ends, we have this notion to disregard others. We, we, for we, uh, uh, individualism is sewn into the fabric of our DNA. We, we, we don't really think about this whole notion of individualism but but to be an individual and to be an individual at a very young age a child starts at, at the, around the age of two or three your, your baby starts saying no me me mm -hmm. they're, they're trying to assert themselves they're, they're trying to find out who they are in this big old world and, 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 and so so it's in our DNA wait wait let, let me go to the Bible see see Cain showed this disregard for God and his brother Abel's gift he, he, he and so he was individualistic he was only concerned about himself Saul Saul seeking to destroy David was an act of disregard for God's anointed one he, he was concerned only about himself he wasn't concerned about the humanity of David. 1 Corinthians 3 and 3 reminds us of the fighting in the church at Corinth. Uh -huh. Oftentimes, oftentimes we show disregard for others in the church, warning their way. We, and, and, and so that there's this notion of disregard, but, but also the me versus we, and there's this sense of disrespect when you are on those polar ends of it. This disrespect for the talents and the gifts of others. See, Joseph, Joseph, in, in, in that story, Joseph um, in Genesis was disrespected by his brothers for his ability to interpret dreams. Yeah. And, and, and so uh, people were disrespecting Moses and, and God creating by creating the golden calf. Yeah. And, and so it's when, when, when there's high anxiety, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And low maturity, there's disrespect, there's yeah. disregard. Wow. And in 1 Corinthians 10 and 14, this idolatry in the Corinth, this disrespect that was occurring at the Lord's Supper. It, it was an issue of high anxiety and low maturity. Sometimes, sometimes we disrespect those who have been displaced in position, who have been placed in, leader, in leadership positions because there is this notion of me versus we, this high anxiety and uh -huh. this low maturity. Uh -huh. But also there's this dishonoring, this, <laughs> the, the this dishonoring others. David, David, even in David's, all of his greatness, he dishonored Uriah and slept with Bathsheba and the office of the king and the office that God had ordained him to. Yeah. Peter, Peter dishonored Jesus because of high anxiety and low maturity yeah. when he denied him some three times. 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, separation in the church between all of these various groups, it, it shows us how this high anxiety and this low maturity can cause us to dishonor others. Yes. And, but, but also, also, it's this disbelief in what God is doing with God's people. And, and when there's high anxiety and low maturity, there's this sense of disbelief. Uh -huh. The sense of disbelief that God can do this. Abraham and Sarah, Sarah doubting God, what God could do in building a nation. High anxiety and low maturity. Uh, 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 Judas not believing Jesus was the chosen one. Chosen one. This high anxiety and this low maturity. And, and so as we look at this text, if we're not careful, we're not careful. We are always living on the edge of being at those polar ends of the we mm -hmm. and the me. Only concerned about me uh -huh. or we are so caught up in the group that we push other people out. Amen. That we push other people out. See, yeah. the, the, this notion of we and me will destroy our relationships and fraction the body of Christ. Paul is speaking to the church of today as he was speaking to the church at Corinth. We, we must balance the we and the me, oh, and the, yeah. the desires that dwell in each one of us. We, we have to balance this out, see, because both of them are in us. But we have to be closer to the middle so that we can live and be concerned about the group but also concerned about ourselves. Yes, too often times, too often times, people get so caught up in the group that they forget about themselves. Yes. Or, or they're so caught up in themselves that they forget about the group. Amen. And so we have to have some balance in that. And, and so low anxiety and high maturity causes you to meet it in the middle. When we realize we are, when we, when we realize that God is moving in us, and what God is doing through us, then we are able to meet in the middle. Amen. When we when we live by that old African proverb, we are because I am, and I am because we are. The body of Christ will change the world. Amen. Just imagine if everybody in here lived by that model. I we are because I am, and I am. Because we are. Wait, wait, somebody needs me to explain that for them. See, see, I exist because of all of you. Yeah. And because of my input, I help all of you. Wait, wait. Oh, so, yeah. wait see, 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 all, all, wait. You exist. We've been here for 117 years because of all of those people that decided to do something, that could see a vision, mm -hmm. but we exist today and we've carried on that legacy because of what we do. Yeah. So somebody's gonna get this in, in, in a minute. Amen. See, in, in, in this, it, once, once we realize that, when we, when we are baptized, we, we drink from the Spirit of God becoming a part of the body of Christ. And, and when you become a part of the body of Christ, you, you have to, merge the we and the me together. You have to merge the two. The, the old dies and the new is born. We, we live in the spirit of God. Paul, Paul likes to use this analogy of, of the body. He, he uses it in Romans as well. We, we live
live, move, and have our being in God. We are the offspring of God, as it says in Acts 17 and 28. May, may, may I show you how to grow stronger together? Can, can, I, can I show you how to balance out the me and the we? Can, can, I, can I give you that? And I'm going to let you get up out of here so we can go eat and see the Falcons game. I'm going to give you three and I'm going to bounce. So, so the first thing, the first thing is, the first thing, the first thing, in, in, in verses 7 through 11 in, in chapter 12, it, 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 basically it's saying living in your gifts, living in your talents, living in your purpose. Wait, wait. Living in your, wait, no, 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 but living in your gifts, living in your talents, living in your purpose. Wait, wait that is the me. That, 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 so, so the me, the me, understanding our purpose, understanding our gifts, understanding our talents, knowing what God has endowed us with. Like the brain understands its gift of leadership, then we have to understand who we are and how we fit in the body of Christ. We, we have to understand who we are and, and, and how God has made us to serve the body of Christ. Using our gifts and our talents to grow the kingdom of God. Uh, ho ho not, not holding, back, holding back our gifts and talents can cause our, uh, our uh, can, really, holding back our, t our, our gifts and our talents, literally, to, to use a medical term, can, can cause a mild stroke in the church. Uh, because well, pretty, pretty much a, a, a stroke is caused by a blood clot in most cases. Yeah. And, and when you hold on to your gifts and your, gifts and your talents, yeah. you blocking the spirit from flowing. Oh, yeah, Amen. Amen. And so when, 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 the blood when the blood vessels are blocked, something occurs in the brain. And, and, and so when you withhold your gifts, you're stopping and withholding from the body of Christ. You, you, uh, we have to uh, uh, be unleashing the power of God has placed in us. We have to unleash all of that stuff that God has poured into us. Amen. And so that's the me. When, when, when we're concerned about helping and edifying and understanding that I have these special gifts, I can do these special things, but how can it help and increase the body of Christ? Then we have matured in our Christian walk. But, yeah. but the next thing, the next thing is living in unity. That verse 12, that verse 12 talks about living in unity in the church. Coming together, the church coming together. Just as the body has many parts, all are, are many parts from, uh, that it creates one body. So living in unity, the, the we part. This whole notion of the we. Now, and we, we, we talked about the, the me. Now we're moving to the we. So, forget what you've been taught of, about the survival of the fittest. Uh, this nation tells us that you should only be concerned about yourself. But, but realize it's not all about me. I, I, I'm a part of the body and I play a role in the body. I, I play a role in the functioning of the body. So, so, so we, we, you know. The, the, the earlier this week, earlier this week, I, I, I tried to be good. I tried to save some money. I'm, I'm kind of cheap some of the time. Or well, let me say this: I'm frugal, right? Right. So I, I decided, I decided I was gonna change my oil, right? And, and, and I'm not as young as I used to be. I'm not as free as I used to be. So when I've been down for a long time, some of the time my back hurts, right? And, and, and so here I am changing my oil. I'm halfway through the process, and my back about goes out. So so now. Here I am, changing my oil, laying on the ground, trying to do everything. And, and, and so, and so, but in that, because my back was hurting, mm -hmm. my legs weren't working as good as they, wait, wait, y'all, y'all, y'all just, wait, wait, so, 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 because my back was hurting, my legs weren't as strong as they could be, wait, wait, because my back was hurting, wait, y'all, y'all, y'all not, so, so, wait, wait. So, because you're not doing what God has called you to do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Because you didn't show up for the meeting. Wait, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. And so, so in that, the body works in concert. Everything has to real not realize 
and recognize what it's meant to do. And when it does what it's meant to do, then the body runs smoother. Amen. Then the body does and everything works for the good and everything works and is more fluid. So, so living in unity, finding your position in the, the body of Christ and, and building relationships to grow the body. When we, when we live in unity and we build relationships, then the body grows stronger. The, the body grows stronger. When, when everybody gets in where they fit in, then the body grows stronger. When everybody decides to do what God has called them to do, then the body grows stronger. When we know our position and our place and we can build relationships, Relationship with the rest of the body of Christ and if the eye is worried about the position and the place of the ear it can't do its job right uh, 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 somebody's gonna get that if you worried about what the choir is doing and you on the usher board then the body is not y'all not hearing me we, we need to be growing stronger together uh, we need to focus on working for the greater good of the community of Christ 1 Corinthians 10 and 24. Nobody should seek his own good, but the good of others. Yeah. When, when we focus on the good of others, when we focus on the good of the total community, uh, like, like the nerves that inform the hand that, that the water is hot and the eyelids that close when there's too much light, the systems are focusing on the greater good of the body. If your nerves were just concerned about the nerves and, and your nerves didn't tell your brain that the water is hot, then you find yourself burned. Uh, but, 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 but when you do what God has called you to do and you live in unity and you work in relationship with the rest of the body, then the whole body works for the good. I'm going to give you one more and I'm going to get out of your way. See, the living, the next thing it says in, in that verse 18, in that chapter 12, it says we have to live in obedience. Amen. We, we have to abstain from the foolishness that the world sends our way. I, I, I like what Paul says. Everything that is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Amen. Everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. In, in 1 Corinthians 10 and 20, 23. See, acknowledge what God is doing in your life. And when you acknowledge what God is doing in your life, then you have to ask God, what would you have me to do for the group? But in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body. That, that verse 18, I, I, I love. It says God has arranged the parts of the body. God put everything where it needs to be. Wait, wait. God put everything where it needs to be. Wait, so, so. God put you exactly where you need to be. Amen. Yeah, yeah, y'all still not getting it. Yeah, yeah. God gave you an assignment that you need to follow. Wait, wait, yeah, yeah. See, see, too many folk, too many folk, too many folk, they, they in one assignment, but they want to be somewhere else. And they don't have the gifts to even do that. Yeah, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, y'all. Yeah, y'all. Yeah, see, y'all thinking about the Falcons. See, wait, wait. Okay, so y'all thinking about the Falcons. Let, well, okay, if Julio Jones decided he wanted to be quarterback, <laughs> where would the Falcons be? It, 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 okay, where would the Falcons be? So, 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 you have to know where God has placed you, where God has put you. You gotta accept your assignment. And every every one of them and accept what God is calling you to do and accept every assignment that God is giving you. Yes, but but this, this this part of the text I didn't read. I, I didn't read because here it is. Here it is. If you flip over to that next chapter, you flip over to that 13, it talks about love. And at the very beginning of it, it says you can have all these gifts, you can have all this stuff, but if you're not living in love, it, 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 don't, it, it don't mean a thing. See, if you're not living in love, it's hurting the body of Christ. Like, like the church at Corinth, Paul is telling us we are stronger together. Uh, two, two, uh, the two parts of the body are exactly the same, yet they function to serve the body differently. 
Uh, oneness doesn't exclude multiplicity, nor does the many rule out the one. Mm -hmm. We are because I am and I am because we are living in our gift, dwelling in unity, worshiping with obedience and embracing the love that is in us and in the church is what we are called to do. Amen. Jesus wants us, well, Jesus went to the cross. Jesus went to the cross so that we can live yeah. in unity. Yeah. So that we can live in unity. Yeah. <laughs> it's best, like, it's basically to say it best, Jesus is the glue that holds the church together. Yeah. Jesus is the glue that holds the church together. What affects one affects all of us in the church because we are of the same body. And, and so when you hurt, I hurt. When I hurt, you hurt. When, when you go to hurt somebody else, then you know you are hurting the whole body of, of Christ. You, you, you need to un we need to understand that our baptism is an event that starts a process of social integration into the body of Christ. We, 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 let, let me break it down like this. Uh, when when a person has a transplant, go ahead, go ahead. the new organ has to be introduced to the body. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. And, and so the body of Christ, when you come into the body of Christ, you have to be introduced into the body of Christ. And, and you have to work inside of, of that. Paul must have been familiar with, with, with a fable of Agrippa. And, and it, but basically the, the fable is... The fable is the, the rest of the body think that it, it's unfair that the stomach enjoys the benefits 